Jesus knows you. He has not forgotten you in your situation. Matthew 10, 29 through to 31, King James Version. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. God knows you, and he knows your name. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. These four words need to be rooted in your spirit. You are not alone. It doesn't matter what you are going through. You need to remember that you are not alone. You have a God who loves you with an everlasting love. Not only does he love you with an everlasting love, but he cares for you. God cares about you and your family. There is something we always forget every time we find ourselves in the middle of the storm, and that is the fact that God knows us and we belong to Him. You belong to God. Isn't that wonderful? Belonging to God. Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. You are not some random social security number. You are God's child. You are not the property of the government or the company you work for. You are God's child. God is not a friend who will run away when you get in trouble. God is not the kind of friend that will disappear when you are faced with challenges. It doesn't matter how terrible the situation may be. God will never leave you. The Bible says you should not be afraid. This is God talking to you. This is Jesus assuring you of who you are in Him. He said you don't have to be afraid of anything. Is there a storm coming your way? Are there giants that are coming your way? Are there situations that have vowed to make you look powerless? God has said you should not be afraid. I don't know what you are going through, but I am here today to simply encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus in whatever situation you are facing. Are you going through a bitter divorce? Don't focus on the pain. Focus on Jesus. Are you going through a financial crisis? Don't focus on the crisis. Focus on Jesus. Are you going through a medical problem, an illness that is eating away at your health? Don't focus on the sickness. Focus on Jesus. Are you dealing with a heartbreak? Don't focus on the heartbreak. Focus on Jesus. Are you dealing with rejection? Don't focus on the rejection. Focus on Jesus. Jesus knows you. Do you even know how important you are to Him? Do you know your worth in Him? Do you know how much Jesus loves you? Do you know that Jesus thinks about you every day? Jesus is not a runner. He will not run when things get hard for you. Jesus is not that friend that left you to fight alone. Jesus is not that friend who betrayed you. Jesus is not that friend that will tell you that you cannot survive your problems. He said you are precious. The hairs on your body are numbered, and He knows everything. If one falls, Jesus knows. Why are you thinking Jesus will leave you to face your troubles alone? Why are you thinking Jesus will forsake you? The Bible says that God is not a man, that he should lie. Anything that he says he would do, that is what he will do. What I want to tell you today is that Jesus knows you. Jesus knows your past. He knows your present and your future has been known already. Jesus knows everything about your life. There is nothing Jesus doesn't know about you. Jeremiah 1, 5, King James Version. 
Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Look at what God is saying here. He said, He knew before you were formed. This is something that should boost your confidence in Christ. He said, Before you were formed, He already knew you. This should bring peace to us. The fact that God knows us even before we started existing. If God knew you before you were born, tell me, why do you think He has forgotten you? The thought He has for you is to make your life a beautiful one, regardless of the storms you face. The plans of God are not to forget you. I don't know why we always think that He will leave us when we face problems. Jesus is with you because He knows you and He loves you. Jesus is with you because He knew you before you were formed. Jesus knows you more than you know yourself. You may think you know you, but I can tell you that there are things you don't even know about yourself that Jesus does. Jesus knows you more than you know yourself. Nathaniel was a man in the Bible who doubted if anything good can come out of Nazareth. He was doubting Jesus. He went to Jesus one day, and on sighting Nathanael from afar, Jesus told him who he was. John 1, 47, King James Version. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Now, if you read your Bible, there has never been a time Jesus and Nathanael sat to talk about each other's life before the time he went to Jesus. But Jesus told him who he was. Jesus did not mention his name, but he told him what he was made of. Jesus knew he was a man with no guile. Nathanael had no deceit in him. He had always been a true Israelite. Nathanael was surprised when he heard Jesus talk about him. He was surprised that Jesus knew him. John 1, 48, King James Version. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee. When thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Jesus only saw him under a fig tree, and he already knew him more than he knew himself. Look, I have not seen a person like this before in my life. Someone who knows you, someone who sees your heart and still chooses to be with you. Someone you sinned against, but he still loves you. Sometimes I sit to think of this. Why should Jesus still love me or still remember me at all after all I have done? The love he has for me has given me the confidence that he can never forget me. Jesus told us something in John 16.33, King James Version. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said there would be problems. Whatever we are facing in our lives now should not come as a surprise. Jesus already told us that they will come. That is life. It was designed to be like that. Ever since the fall of man, life has been this way. Troubles will come. Things that will make us cry will come. People will hate us. There will be frustration and other unpleasant things happening to us. But Jesus said he has overcome all these things for us. That is a wonderful thing to keep us calm. That is something to remind us that we are not alone. Jesus is with you and me. Jesus will always be there for you. Jesus knows your name. Jesus knows your thoughts. Jesus sees your movements. Jesus feels what you are feeling. Jesus is always right there with you. Jesus is a friend you can trust. Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. Please, don't give up on Jesus. 
He is not going to give up on you. The plans of Jesus for your life are great. These plans are to make your life beautiful, regardless of the troubles coming at you. The plan is to make things bright for you. Deuteronomy 31, 6, King James Version. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. When you look to your right, Jesus is there. When you look to your left, Jesus is there. When you are alone, Jesus is there. When you are in the midst of the multitude, Jesus is there. Jesus has not gone anywhere. Look, if you are going through a tough and rough time right now, I just want to tell you that Jesus still knows you, and He will never stop knowing you. When it seems like it is too hard, don't lose focus. Please, this is a word from the Lord. Do not lose focus. It is the devil trying to make you fall into his traps. Do not leave Jesus Christ. Jesus has not left you, and he will never leave you. Jesus still has you in his record. Jesus will never leave you, nor forsake you. Worry Matthew 4, 4 But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. God wrote this Bible for you. It is your guide. It is your manual. And God Almighty wrote it for you. And within this book you will find instructions on how you should live your life. The Bible addresses a wide range of topics. And one of the topics the Bible addresses is the topic of worry. God as our Maker knew that we as humans have a propensity to worry, and in His Bible, He instructed us on how we can overcome worry. Just do some research on the effects of worry and stress on the human body. You will quickly find that God did not design us to live in a constant state of stress and worry. Two words for you today. Don't worry. This is the message from Jesus today. Don't worry. But, but, Jesus, this is happening to me. Jesus is saying to you, don't worry. Matthew 6, 25 through to 34. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Three times in this passage of Scripture, Jesus tells you don't worry. So the next time worry attacks you, I want you to read Matthew 6, 
25 through to 34. And you will hear the words of Jesus three times telling you, Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. In this passage of Scripture, Jesus is not telling His followers to quit their jobs. Neither is He telling them to be lazy and expect God to supernaturally provide. Neither is He implying to people not to go to work to provide for their families. Neither is He telling people not to plan for the future. What He is telling you is don't be so consumed and obsessed with worry. So I ask you one simple question today. What are you worried about? What are you worried about if God said to you, I will never leave you nor forsake you? What are you worried about if God is in control? What are you worried about if God the Father is almighty and all-knowing? What are you worried about if God is always there in the time of trouble? This is a word straight from heaven today. God is with you, even in the crisis you are facing today. He is there with you now as you face the impossible odds. He is there with you now as you face the doctor's report. He is there with you as you face the giants in your life. I know, I know, I know, it looks hopeless. But the Bible is telling you, don't worry. What are you worrying about today? I just want to remind you that God is bigger than your worry. He is bigger than that situation. All that we are facing, the crisis, the sickness, the uncertainty in the world, God is bigger than all these things. It's okay not to be able to solve every situation in your life. It's okay not to have the solution. But know this, you have a God that has the perfect solution. Our God specializes in creating solutions for impossible situations. Philippians 4.6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. The Bible says that we should be careful for nothing. The word careful, according to that scripture, means we should take no thought for anything. The first reason we should not take thought or become worried about anything is that our worries will never make anything better. Rather, worries normally worsen people's conditions. This does not mean that we should be senseless or unthoughtful. We can make plans about the future and trust the grace of God to help us through the future. However, God does not want us to pierce our hearts with sorrows because of the challenges and cares of this life. There will always be reasons to worry, but we can also choose not to be worried. We are to be careful for nothing. Instead of being thoughtful and worried, we are to make our requests known to God with a heart full of thanksgiving. No matter how great our challenges present themselves before us, we must learn to magnify our trust in God above our problem. God did not say we should live in a little la-la land. We as Christians need to deal in the reality. And the reality is in every person's life, there are legitimate reasons to worry. For others, it is their children, others their job, others their relationship, others it is how they will pay the bills or how they will put food on the table. But what worry does? Worry limits your vision. Worry says everything ends with you and your resources. But that is not a reality for a child of God. So next time you worry, listen to the words of Jesus and don't worry. And hand that worry over to God. Just give it to God. Present it over to Him. He is a loving Father. Don't hold on to that worry. Give the situation over to God and allow the peace of God to overflow you. Your resources are limited, but God's aren't. One of the greatest causes of worry is fear of the unknown 
and the fear of failing or losing. But Christ has already won the battle, and we cannot be defeated if we remain in Christ. We don't need to worry, because we are more than conquerors through Christ. Fear has been defeated. You are not a candidate of fear. You are not a child of fear and worry. God is your Father, and you are His child. God knows how the story ends. God knows what we need, even before we make our requests known to Him. He is a loving Father who cares for us. He values us and in His hand. Instead of being worried about what the future holds, we should rather seek the face of God, the God who holds the future. Can I tell you a secret? The problem you are stressing about and worrying about, God has already solved the problem. You just don't know it yet. Remember, He is a God that makes a way when there seems to be no way. Next time you are feeling worried, Listen to the advice from Jesus in Matthew 6 and hear our Lord Jesus telling you in whatever situation you are facing, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, but this is happening to me, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry.